peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, who are you? Who am I? It's a question of identity and perhaps one of the biggest questions of our time is so I'm curious just how you might answer it. Who are you? The first thing you might answer is your name. Well, that's good. I would too. And in a deeper sense, then, what is all wrapped up behind your name? So what makes you do? Where do you base your identity? Do you base your identity in your family or your friend circle? In your work or your school? Maybe within yourself. What happens to your identity when those things go wrong? I could ask questions like this all day, but I think you see that there's a reason this is one of the big questions of our time. It's something that everyone is asking. Who am I? The family member is the answer to that. It's important. Who am I? Ask the employee struggling to manage everything when life throws yet another curveball at them. Who am I? Ask the young man or woman when social media preaches self image as the highest and unattainable goal and gender identity as something that is not lovingly tipped by God but as foolishly. And if you've asked yourself this question before, you're not alone. You know that this is nothing new. It is something people have been asking themselves for all of recorded history. When Moses found himself far from all estranged from his friends, his family, his people, in the middle of two worlds, which is Hebrew by birth and Egyptian by upbringing, and now far removed from it all. And when God comes to him and tells him to go back to all that, the first words out of Moses' lips are the same. Who am I that I should go? But you see how God answers that question. God answers the who am I of Moses and of you and me, just not in the way you might expect. He answers our who am I with another name. Really, as simple as that. The searching question of every generation and of every individual of our identity is all wrapped up in our identity. Significant about you find yourself wondering that question too. You're not alone in that either. Maybe you recognize these words from the famous balcony speech in Romeo and Juliet. What in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell like sweet. You see, Juliet hates the fact that her last name. Captain, and the Romeo is a mockery, and she says that the names of their feuding families mean nothing when it comes to their life. And that's where we're going to Shakespeare and Joy. But Shakespeare goes on to disprove those very words he has said in the rest of this play. Even though Juliet wants so desperately for a name to mean nothing, in the end, his pretty name is populous, and Romeo's name might be that drives the two lovers to suicide. There's a lot in the name. And that name is their identity. And for them, that meant an irreconcilable difference. And so a name is important. Why? Because Name is the way of making something unknown. Yeah. And for instance, if Juliet calls a rose a dog, 
whether or not it smells as sweet, you won't have any idea of what she's talking about. But when she calls it a rose, by its name, and if she adds to that name by its name, it is a red velvet rose with soft petals overlapping and hiding most of the thorns underneath on a dark green stem. Now you have a definite picture in mind. Now it's something that you can know that is knowable and apprehendable by you. Now it has an identity. Now it has a name. So in this much deeper sense, when we name something, we are claiming it as our own. And it's something that we can know and apprehend and have for ourselves. So when we out the demon by their name, and showing that he has complete and total power over them. When Adam is tasked with naming the animal in the Garden of Eden, he is showing as God walks into the feet that he has total power and mastery over them. However, in Adam's case, by identifying the animal, that also leads him to who am I that I am all the one? It's a very good question. Essentially, it doesn't know that. Who am I that I should go? It's the same question that's being asked today. Who am I that I should carry out these responsibilities? Who am I when my family is failing? Who am I failing my family? Who am I when all that I have worked for seems meaningless? And who am I when I see the bad that I know I'm capable of? And when I, in fact, do it? When I don't even know who I am anymore? And when the only thing I know is what I am not today? Who am I? Who am I that I am? God's answer comes right away. Even though it might not be exactly as you expect. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. Who am I? God said. He says there's no need for our question. And he stops us. He refocuses us with a kind of truer, all comforting answer. He gives them his name. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent you to you. I'll never forget this day in the city of the we have heard it. As my Old Testament professor has set this up as the biggest day of the year, the day when we would look at and learn the name of the Lord. It's only four letters in Hebrew, six simple strokes of the pen, and contained in that is the Almighty Lord who created the heavens and the earth. That is the name that is translated capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is Lord in our Bible, or capital I A M, right here, the I M. This is the name that has been rendered the full one, or pronounced. Yahweh. This is God's name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. A personal name to call him by. A name by which he is personally yours. And what's in that name? You might be wondering. What's in the name I am? And everything that he is. He is love. 
And even though we aren't any of these things, if we are able to name God, what we are saying is that we are able to claim all that He is for ourselves. How? How can we name Him who is unknowable? How can we grasp and apprehend the infinite God? One way in which we can perfectly identify God and identify with God. One way in which God makes Himself apprehensible to us and places us within our human grasp. That was by becoming a human for us. Just as the angel of the Lord appeared in flames of fire from within the bush, dwelling within us, but not consuming. So also, the eternal Lord, to take us human flesh, but not to kill us, also that He might be with us and be reconciled to us without consuming us. He came as Yeshua in Hebrew. They speak in Greek, literally meaning the I am saved. And in that human name to Jesus, we can grasp and claim God for ourselves. We, we claim all that He is and all that He has done for us. His perfect life in our place. His perfect death on our behalf. His victorious resurrection. And all of us. He is our His love, His mercy, His his justice, his perfection, his satisfaction, his presence, and his sufficiency. All of us in today's season. That's what it is. Don't let Juliet fool you. There is a box to it. In. in that name, it contains your entire and eternal identity. That name is the one who knows you by your name. He claims you for his own, who has complete control over everything in your life and works it all for your good. The praise is his glory. So call upon his name in every trust. Pray, pray, and give thanks. And when that question comes back, really this ugly head again. Who am I? I am you. The I am is God. So thank you. Please stand. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join to confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Nazi priest on page 